Hello everyone and welcome to this special edition of Footy Feed. Well, the Giants are on the hunt for a new coach after Leon Cameron today announced his resignation after nine years at the helm. His 193rd and final game this Sunday against Carlton at Giants Stadium. Our Chief Football Reporter Damien Barrett joins me to discuss the story. Welcome to you, Damien. Hi, Nat. Yeah, did so this take you by surprise? Uh, it did from a first day of round eight going into round yeah. nine perspective. But if we want to use the word surprise, no. I mean, the narrative and the discussions that have been made public from Leon himself and also the the club. Um, we get to this point at two and six score line in his tenth season. No, there, there was no surprise to that being the outcome of his contract. Um, just the timing of it before round nine. Yes. Take us through, I guess, the machinations of how we came to this decision yep. in this past week. Look, the the fifty three point loss in that to the the Cats on the weekend on Saturday it was. It wasn't the club's worst loss, but in, in this season and in the context of where he was at, it, it was as bad an outcome as he could have got in round eight. And ultimately, that loss, Jeremy Cameron kicking five goals in the opposition yes. team, um, meant and, and that, that other conversations that had been had were ramped up. And we got to Tuesday, Dave Matthews, the chief executive officer of the club, Leon Cameron sat down. They reached the point where that's it. Um, Leon, I think rightly and, and respectfully from the club's point of view, just wanted some time to tell everyone that he wanted and held dear before they heard it from a, a media sense. And then the, everyone was told Thursday morning and there was a board meeting coinciding around all of that. It wasn't called because of it um, as we speak today on Thursday. And Leon Cameron in his press conference really stressed the fact that it was a mutual decision. The club yeah. had been very pragmatic with their discussions. They've had discussions over a long period of time between himself and Dave Matthews, the players then told this morning the players were all in attendance too at the press conference as well and Mark McVeigh will be the interim coach. He was also um, at training this morning taking the players through a run through ahead of their game um, against Carlton on Sunday. This though was how it all unfolded at the press conference. Leon and I on Tuesday had a conversation that basically got us to a decision that we're at today which is that it would be a great opportunity Sunday to try to celebrate uh, the contribution he's made to this club in, in a final game at Giants Stadium against Carlton. You know, we have open, honest conversations. and um, So on Tuesday when I caught up with Dave, I, we said, I think it's the time's right um, to, to have a bit of breathing space for the car club to, to look for its next coach. And I, I know I've still got the players, but it's a it's a zapping job and I'll be totally honest um, you know sometimes that can be that can wear you down a little bit Ross Lyon was you know one that I would sit back and admire one thing he always said is you cannot be in 99% you've got to be in 100% and if I've waned a little bit for a percent or two then that's helped make me come to this decision and the club come to this decision and Leon has been a strong part of the journey to establish this club as a real force in the AFL a real force. He took a whole bunch of teenagers and turned them into elite footballers. Remarkable achievement in our view. A really remarkable achievement. So we heard Tony Shepherd there just talk about how Leon was such an integral part of building this club when he came there in 2012. They're a fledgling club full of teenagers. Yeah. And the way that he's been able to, I guess, get this club into finals and not just one finals appearance, but five, it's, it's a big legacy that he leaves. It is. I, I take the view, Nat, that he was successful. We, we in this AFL system only view ultimate success yeah. as being successful. And it's unfair. Um, it is unfair. Having said that, uh, the 2016 season will be the one that he will forever put his head on the pillow and wonder. Mm. Um, he didn't do anything wrong. The club didn't choke in that preliminary final against the Bulldogs, but they didn't make the grand final they were meant to make and, and ultimately win in that particular year. That was the year that they were on song and flying. 2019, the, the grand final they did yeah. make. By the time they got there, they were done anyway. Their, their grand finals were the previous, I think, three weeks of, of finals performances there. Look, any coach who gets 18 to five different sets of finals series and wins a final in each of those five series. You can coach, you are successful. So what next for Leon Cameron? Well, he was asked that very question in the press conference. Let's hear what he had to say first. Um, that's a hard one. I mean, uh, you know, I've been in the game for 34 years straight since I've, you know, just playing and coaching. So it's time to have a bit of a spell, but yeah, you never say never. I mean, I, I love coaching. I love doing what I do, um, but who knows where that is going to be in, in, the, in the coming months. Never say never. 
yeah. coaches always say that. Do you yeah. reckon he's the kind of guy who could just sit out for a year or so, or is he going to have itchy feet? Oh, I'd imagine he'd be uh, well sought after in that in that non senior coach capacity. And I can't see him coaching again. I think okay. he's had the ten years, and he's not the name that Cubs going to go to. What I would be doing though, if I was a North Melbourne as early as right now, would be picking up the phone, just asking him, "What are you doing?" And not to replace David Noble. I'm not saying that, but. He needs some help. Um, the experienced, wizened head of Leon Cameron, given his current club, ultimately Nat doesn't want him. He, I would think he's available to, to go elsewhere right now. Um, so that element could kick into play if he if it, that that is not the case with North Melbourne. A role like that yeah, for, for a club that needs some development and and support for the senior coach, I would see him perfect in that role. On the topic of senior coach, obviously the Giants will now start a process. Mark McVeigh, yeah. I guess, if he wants to be a senior coach and has those aspirations, this is a an audition period now for the rest of 2022. But it obviously thrusts uh, the name of Alistair yeah. Clarkson further into the spotlight because he is going to be the number one coach that everyone talks about and links to this job here on after. It, it is, and that's obviously a statement of fact, as, as much as speculation. That it <laughs> will be. I mean, the race st officially starts yeah. now. We see what happens with domino effects. If you go back to last year when Collingwood made the uh, approach effectively to Sam Mitchell, yes. that precipitated the uh, the whole transition of Alistair Clarkson out, Sam Mitchell in, and we we saw the race that um, happened, you know, between other clubs with Clarkson. Carlton made the approach as well. Yep. So, look, the race starts now because it's official and Clarkson can have that phone call with GWS in a way that he can't have it with, with other footy clubs. He's not... I wouldn't be putting everything on the Clarkson okay. ship, Nat. I mean, his last three years at Hawthorne weren't as successful, obviously, as the... You he's know, a big the, name, the, though. Yeah, of course he is, yeah. But he's not for everyone. Um, the, the assistant coach, too, getting the interim job at 2-6. Yes. and six, I mean, the club made finals last year from a 2-6 and six score line. That club was Essendon. That's what McVeigh picks up right now. That, that can actually muddy the thinking of a club um, if the interim coach gets on a roll. If, if right now... They don't think he's their coach. But, look, Clarkson's name, that. You're, I mean, you're right to raise it. It's going to be prominent in, in this and other clubs' conversations. The other one I want to throw in there is just a little bit mischievous, perhaps. But James Hurd has been working at the Giants yeah. in a sort of mentoring leadership capacity. Could yeah. he want a senior well, job again? Well, people forget that he came back into the AFL system after the ban. It was Essendon who made the decision mm. to remove him. So... There's no issue from any perspective in that regard. I just don't see that he's put enough time into football per se in recent years. And while his impact in that week and a half or thereabouts that he's been doing in that um, mentoring space has been pretty significant, I don't see that happening. Okay, we'll see. Cal Toomey has an article on afl.com.au and the AFL Live app now uh, talking about who are the contenders for this job at the Giants. Damo, thank you so much for joining us. You can catch more of Damo on AFL Daily, of course, our daily podcast from 7.30am weekdays. For all of your other footy news, you know where to go, afl.com.au and the AFL Live app.